case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. A woman now accused of murder says she was playing with a gun before it fired a deadly shot inside a Terrell Hills home. That bullet hit 33 year old April Longoria in the chest last Thursday, but now there's been an arrest. According to police, 34 year old Maria Neely was at the scene of the shooting. It happened in the 2000 block of Harry Wurzbach Road. However, officers say she escaped through a back door. Witnesses told police that they were in the home listening to music while Neely was playing with the gun. The pistol fired a round, which traveled through a wall and hit Longoria. And we're trying to get you a picture of live cam, but that's not coming up right now. So, we'll Sarah, head over to Sarah. Yeah, I know we have some good news. There's a small chance. Uh, yeah, a very <laughs> small chance for rain. Seems like my mic is not really working here. Mm, so I think they're like, having some technical like problems. So. Right now. Hey, there we go. I'm here. I promise. Okay, so I want to see here uh, if we can get a look at the aquifer. They probably don't have my AR, my my aquifer graphic popping up here. So let's bring up those graphics full for a second if we can. Outside right now it is 91 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. Well, we've got south winds at about 10 miles per hour. You can kind of make up the numbers there, but it looks like they're having a difficult time bringing up my graphics. A little bit uh, hotter this afternoon will be close to 100. And as John Paul mentioned, we do have a small chance in the afternoon for a isolated shower or storm. I'll have those details for you in the full forecast in just a bit, plus a little bit of weather trivia. So you're going to want to stick around for that. John Paul, Ursula. Thank you so much, Sarah. We earlier were showing you some video from a different crime scene. Now we're going to kind of sync it up for you. This is a, 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 a murder that was uh, in Terrell Hills. Yeah, she, uh, police say she was playing with a gun before it fired a deadly shot inside the Terrell Hills home. We were just repeating this information from earlier. Now we have the correct video up. That is a 33-year-old April Longoria. Uh, she, sh she was shot in the chest last Thursday. But now there is an arrest. According to police, 34-year-old Maria Neely was at the scene of the shooting. It happened in the 2000 block of Harry Wurzbach Road. However, officers say, again, she escaped through a back door. And they said they had been listening to some music when she was playing with that gun. Okay, let's see, where are we gonna go next? Let's, uh... are we coming back to me? Okay, sounds good. Why not? Let's right. take it's, another it's, look it's outside. It's Friday. We get a... we're, we're gotta, we got some gremlins in the equipment, <laughs> I, think, I think. Yeah, I today. think our graphics and our, our equipment wants to go on their weekend a little bit early. <laughs> so do I. I so don't let, blame it. <laughs> hey, yeah, you can see again out there, guys, that we really are not seeing too much in the way of uh, anything outside right now. Uh, we've got the aquifer is actually down, unfortunately, about three tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. And the humidity is making it feel even hotter, as I said earlier. Here's a look at outside. It's 91 degrees, but it feels like 96 already. 95 in Pleasanton, but it feels like 101. 90 in Kerrville, but it feels like 92. This afternoon, 100 for the high and a small chance for an isolated shower storm. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to have those updates for you and a look at the future casts for this afternoon in just a few minutes. All right, we've had some technical difficulties. We'll continue trying to push through and get you the information as correct as possible. But now back to you, Valdi. Mandy Gutierrez is set to return to work as principal for Rob Elementary. The district had placed her on paid leave. Now they've reached a mutual agreement. It'll allow her to return to the district in a, quote, administrative capacity. On Wednesday, she defended herself, saying she did not use the PA system the day of the shooting because she was trained it would cause more panic and harm. Instead, she sent an alert through an app to teachers' phones. Gutierrez also insisted the lock on the door to classroom 111 worked, though it may not have worked because it needed more force to engage the lock. Meantime, as families are preparing to get their children ready for the new school year, part of that involves making sure that their immunizations are up to date. And that is why Comal ISD is hosting two student immunization clinics. They are on August 8th. The first one taking place at Canyon Middle School. It's from 8 to 11. Then there's another one at Piper Middle School from 1 to 4. The student immunization clinics are open to school aged children up to 18 years old. Those who would like to attend need to register online by August 4th. 
That's next week. You can use your health insurance to cover the cost. Otherwise, the out-of-pocket cost will be $10 per shot. And the need for blood donors remains high. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says they especially need type O blood. They continue encouraging folks to roll up their sleeves and give back. And they're holding another community blood drive right now. That's happening at South Texas Renal Care Group. That's on North San Saba Street. It ends at 2 this afternoon. If you can't make it in, you can always go to SouthTexasBlood.org to schedule an appointment at another time. Here's something that we rarely talk about. It's a tip. Don't dump your aquarium in the river. That's a message coming from the San Antonio River Authority. The River Authority says they continue to find non-native species, everything from fish to snails, and they're wreaking havoc on the San Antonio River ecosystem. Tiffany Huerta says a look at ways you can help keep the river healthy. These species in particular uh, will eat up all the vegetation in the system, uh, leaving it kind of devoid of any vegetation if they go unchecked, um, and that can uh, have more cascading effects for various species kind of throughout the food chain. Austin Davis, aquatic biologist with the San Antonio River Authority, says they are trying to combat invasive species throughout the basin. A lot of the invasives are introduced through aquarium uh, dumps into the river. That's where we get some of our armored catfish and some of our apple snails. The River Authority says some aquarium hobbyists purchase these non-native species from pet stores for their homes, but once they outgrow their tanks, they throw them here at the San Antonio River. One of them includes the apple snails. These species, because they're invasive, they're not native to our basin, there's no natural predators for them in our system, and so they can reproduce uh, at pretty alarming rates and just kind of take over the entire system and outcompete some of our natives. Davis says you could go to your local aquarium or find another hobbyist where you could rehome your fish or snail. Uh, we love to know where the invasives are popping up uh, anywhere and everywhere throughout the basin. So if anybody sees anything, we'd love to uh, get any reports of those. If you want to help, Davis says you can also volunteer with the River Authority. We can have everybody trained up to remove apple snails in a safe manner. And although there are a lot of invasive species within our basin. The vast majority of our species that we find in the river are native species. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. The migrating monarch was officially put on the endangered species list last week, but you can help the insect by planting milkweed. Milkweed is the monarch's prime food source. Extreme weather events and pesticides have killed a massive amount of the naturally occurring milkweed in North America. It's why since 2000, the Live Monarch Foundation has made it its mission to send out thousands of free seeds across the country. Now it's getting thousands of requests. There's always somebody asking um, for free seeds every day in, in the mail, but just a little bit. And then Friday, uh, it looks like it's about 50 to 100 times that volume. Singers asking for people to go to their website instead of sending them envelopes makes a small donation and send it in an online order for the seeds to help their small stab of less than five people keep up with the request. We have more information on KSAD.com, including when you should start planting milkweed seeds and what you can expect from the plants once you do. It might be hot out, but there could still be a great day underway to go to the zoo. How you can score a discount today is still ahead. St. Louis is under, that's not the right video, but St. Louis is underwater and has been for a few times this week. We'll bring you the latest in that dangerous situation coming up. Right now, search and rescue teams backed by the National Guard are searching for flooded Appalachian communities for missing people. This comes as record floods have wiped out entire communities in Kentucky. The state's governor there says 16 people have died, but he's expecting that number to grow as the rain is still falling. ABC's Derek Dennis has the details. Kentucky's Governor Bashir activating the National Guard to assist in the rescue efforts amid devastating flooding. The state of emergency that I signed yesterday covers every county in Kentucky. We are still responding. We still have the tools that we need. Entire neighborhoods in the eastern part of the state underwater. Everything's gone. Like, everything is gone. The whole life is gone. This family climbing on top of their destroyed home, trying to salvage what's left. Got 10 stuck in apartment three. Got a family trapped in a home, standing on the counters. We got multiple people trapped, standing on top of the house and on top of their vehicles. Perry County, one of the hardest hit areas. It's very devastating seeing um, 
the house you grow up in, you know, get washed away. Helicopters rescuing those who can't be reached by boat. We've got folks now that we can't get to. They've got water in their homes and they're trapped and we just can't get to them because the water the water is to swim. A team from FEMA now in Kentucky to aid in the recovery. We're committed to bringing whatever resources are necessary to support the life-saving efforts as well as the ongoing recovery efforts. Severe weather continues to impact much of the country. St. Louis, Missouri underwater for the second time this week after heavy rains caused more flash flooding. Parts of Las Vegas seeing power outages and flooding as severe thunderstorms move through. Crews helping to rescue people stranded in their cars. Additional rain is expected in Missouri and Kentucky through the weekend. A flood watch or warning will likely stay in effect for areas in Kentucky that saw the worst of the flooding. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. While we don't want that kind of situation to happen here, it it is kind of heartbreaking that we can't even get a drop of rain in San Antonio. Yeah, nobody wants that, but some showers would help. Yeah, and we have a measly 20% chance this afternoon, but as you can see outside right now, those clouds are not doing much. The aquifer, unfortunately, is down three tenths of foot over the past 24 hours. Pollen count, the only allergen out there is molds, and it is low. Right now, it's 91 degrees in San Antonio, but it feels like 96. It could be hotter. Our Weather 101 question for the day, what is the hottest temperature Temperature ever recorded in San Antonio. Here are your options. I'll have the answer to this and of course your forecast for this afternoon and the rest of the week and into the weekend coming up. If you can brave the heat today, you can score a discount at the San Antonio Zoo. It is Locals Day, and that means that Bear County residents can get tickets for $8. Discounted admission tickets can be purchased at the zoo's front gate with proof of Bear County residency. And a reminder, the zoo closes at 4 this afternoon. Those animals have dealt with a pretty hot summer <laughs> over there at the zoo. The Those animals, go, us, we've dealt with well, a hot summer. Say, I know, but we could at least go visit them and That's show true. our appreciation. That is true. And they do take good care of those animals, too. Yeah. I've seen them give popsicles <laughs> to the animals and things like that. We could use a little bit of a cool down, but hey, it could be hotter. Okay, the answer to our weather 101 question, I want John Paul and Ursula to chime in here. What is the hottest temperature ever recorded in San Antonio? You guys have some guesses? I think it's 116. Ursula says C, John Paul. D, all the above. <laughs> 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 well, I'm sorry, you guys are both wrong. Oh, Believe it or man. not, the hottest temperature ever recorded in San Antonio was 111 degrees back in September of 2000. I remember yes, it now. I'm sure. You can, we can get that hot in September. So a little disheartening when you consider the fact that we've yet to enter August and we've already had uh, 48 100 degree days. Today could be 49. Take a look outside right now. It is 91 degrees. It feels like 96. We've got a wind from the south at 10 miles per hour, but those dew points are still high, close to 70. So that's why we have a heat index value. Not seeing too many clouds out there right now. It's 91 in Givaldi and in Del Rio, 90 in Kerrville, 95 in Pleasanton, 95 in Gonzales. Notice as we zoom in, you can see those puffy, puffy cumulus clouds developing as we head into the afternoon. They could be heavy laden along the sea breeze and one or two showers along the sea breeze could make a run for that I-35 corridor, but it's plenty hot as it is right now. It is still though 87 in Canyon Lake, kind of the cool spot on the map up near the lake. Here's that high res future cast. You can see that one or two sea breeze showers could develop this afternoon. And as I said, try to make it to I-35. That's why between about 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. there's a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm. Not a good chance, but the chance is there. Better rain chances, uh, better chances than the lottery. So we have that at least. <laughs> Temperatures will be uh, hot though this afternoon, close to 100 degrees. 100 for the high in San Antonio. It'll be 102 in Pleasanton, 102 in Del Rio, even hotter southwest of San Antonio toward Carrizo Springs and Laredo. 
Uh, Kenny Lake, you're the cool spot on the map right now, but you will be at 99 this afternoon. 101 in Castroville, 101 in Hondo, 100 in Seguin, 101 in New Braunfels, 100 in Floresville. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast for the remainder of this afternoon. We're just going to crank up the heat by four. We'll be close to 100 again. Notice that that 20% chance of showers and storms gets introduced after 3 p.m. Winds will be breezy at times from the southeast, gusting up to about 20 miles per hour. And then after the sun sets at 8 p.m., our rain chance will go away and it'll still be pretty warm. Temperatures will be in the 80s. If you have any Friday night date plans or anything like that, it's just going to be a warm and breezy evening. Across the state of Texas, it's fairly quiet with the exception of Houston getting some of those sea breeze showers right now. And as we look at the nation, there is a very clearly a corridor where we're seeing heavier rain. I mean, you've been seeing it on the news in Kentucky, uh, all of that flash flooding. Well, that's where the jet stream is. That's why these areas across the Tennessee River Valley and, and even across the Central Plains have a, a much better chance at rain today and even some flooding rains as well. That jet stream is too far north of us in San Antonio. So while these areas across the Central Plains and the Tennessee River Valley may get too much rain, we're going to be seeing little to no rain. Notice that hole right over South Central Texas over the next seven days. So unfortunately, not great news for us when it comes to the drought and the summer heat. Today is our best chance for rain at only 20% over the next seven days. Monday and Tuesday, wimpy 10% chance for a stray shower. Otherwise, it is just going to be hot. Now over the weekend, some Saharan dust is going to move in. I'll have that Saharan dust forecast for you coming up in a bit in the next half hour. Just know that it is going to stay hot for the next seven days as we enter into August. John Paul Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. Triple digits across the board. Mm -hmm. Something we've uh, become used to, I guess. Yeah. Now, shifting gears over to sports, the Cowboys are trying to make some progressions. Yeah, and so far, uh, so good for our, our, our crew out in California. Greg Simmons and the guys say Cowboys are looking pretty good. Now, one guy who's there who isn't the happiest, though, is tight end Dalton Schultz. He wanted a long-term deal. He didn't get it, but he did report to camp. And Kellen Mond said he had to build a new throwing foundation during the offseason coming up. That's Dallas Cowboys tight end Dalton Schultz playing football with his four-year-old son at Cowboys training camp in Big Board Sports. Camping with KZAN, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys tight end Dalton Schultz is entering his fifth season in the NFL, all with the Cowboys. When it comes to stats, last season was his best with 78 receptions for 808 yards and eight touchdowns, all career highs for the Stanford Cardinal. But Dalton showed up at training camp bummed out because he did not get the long-term contract extension he wanted during the offseason. Now this season, he's playing under the franchise tag of $10.1 million, which is still not too shabby. I'd be lying to you if I said I wasn't disappointed. Um, you know, obviously, I think we all came into it thinking that, you know, we'd be able to get a long term deal done. And, um, you know, that's something that, you know, we push for, push for. Um, you know, they were trying to push for as well. And, um, you know, this will be the only time that I speak on it. But, I mean, just as I kind of, you know, move past that, I think, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm at peace with knowing that I put my absolute best foot forward. Someone who knows a little something about that is Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott, who went through two franchise tags before agreeing to a four-year, $160 million deal. One thing Dalton pointed out that he noticed about Dak is that Dak's velocity of his passes has increased. And during his first presser at Cowboys camp yesterday, Prescott agreed. It's definitely different, um, and I just think it's the way that I've been training. Um, as I mentioned in the spring, training more functional. Uh, a lot of the rotation work. Um, using my legs, uh, just working on different arm angles that um, being able to get the power in my throw, no matter what, which way or whatever the route is, whether it's an outbreaker, inbreaker, I've got to get it around somebody. Uh, just a lot of work has been put into it and uh, it's starting to show. 
Here's more video evidence that wide receiver Michael Gallup is running through drills as he comes back from a torn ACL that he suffered in the Cowboys second to last regular season game last year in week 17. Gallup told the media yesterday that he will not be ready for the week one home opener against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He said it's not a reasonable possibility and offered up no timeline on a target date for his return. Minnesota Vikings second year quarterback Kellen Mond built a new foundation with throwing fundamentals this offseason. Last year, just days in the training camp, he tested positive for COVID-19. He missed a chunk of practices and lost about 10 pounds. Because of that, he said he picked up some bad throwing habits because he was trying to create more power because of the weight that he lost. Now, this offseason, he said he unlearned some of those things and built off a new foundation. Mond is healthy, happy, and battling Sean Mannion for the backup job behind Kirk Cousins. Yeah, you know, I'm excited and, you know, I'm not really worried about, you know, any uh, outside competition, you know, in my mind, you know, if I do what I need to do, if I go out and execute the way I know I can and the way I should, then I think everything will uh, work itself out. On day one of practice this week, Mond and Mannion split second team reps and Minnesota's new head coach is former NFL quarterback Kevin O'Connell, which Mond said will help him out because coach has a QB mindset. All right, well, I wanted to tell you a quick joke that I told Sarah and Ursula earlier. Oh, no. As a meteorologist from another city was doing his forecast. Mm -hmm. He said, we're peaking in the 90s. Okay. Just like the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> and it <laughs> hurt. <laughs> and it hurt because and it And you're not even a true. fan. It hurt because it was true. <laughs> He's a we're Texan. hoping for better things. All right, fans of Selena Quintanilla have a new song to add to their playlist, a preview of new music. That is coming from the late Tejano star. We have that in the next half hour. As businesses and workers feel the impact of higher prices, one fast food restaurant thought they had the solution. Pay workers with chicken, not money. Why they may be letting go of that idea, coming up. Turning now to the urgent push to get basketball star Brittany Griner and former Marine Paul Whelan released from Russian custody. Russia's foreign minister says that he is now open to talking to Secretary of State Antony Blinken about the U.S. proposal for the prisoner swap. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. Right now, a high-stakes phone call between Secretary of State Antony Blinken and his Russian counterpart in the works. It's part of the diplomatic effort to try to bring Americans Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan home from Russian prisons. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov now apparently open to discussing the possible prisoner swap the U.S. offered weeks ago and publicly revealed this week. Secretary Blinken asking to speak with Lavrov about what the U.S. is calling a substantial offer. In response, just yesterday, Lavrov's spokesperson saying the Russian diplomat would, quote, pay attention to this request when time permits. But just hours ago, Lavrov appearing to change his tune, saying he plans to propose a time to discuss the possible prisoner exchange because, quote, it would be interesting to listen to Blinken's proposals. The irony here is that while the, the White House went public with their negotiating stance uh, to, in an attempt to uh, uh, speed up the negotiation to get Ms. Griner home, I think it may end up delaying her release and, uh, and backfiring on the White House. The Biden administration has declined to detail the proposed offer, but ABC News has learned U.S. officials are trying to exchange U.S. prisoner and Russian arms dealer Victor Boot for Griner and Whelan. I'm cautiously optimistic that the Russians, whatever it, it, the offer is, the Russians will take it. The family of American teacher Mark Fogel, who's serving a 14-year sentence in Russia on drug charges, disappointed. He's not part of the current offer. And he needs to be part of this deal. And it's so unclear how quickly these diplomatic talks could happen and if and when Russia will actually agree to the offer. But the White House says the issue of Americans detained abroad is a priority for President Biden. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Keeping an eye on that thermometer today, but look at that, a nice fat cloud sitting over that area. They're getting yeah. some shade. Getting good for them. Shade. Hey, that is good for them. Something you'll notice about those fat clouds, though, is that they're not really growing that much in the vertical. They're not we got to really stop weight really shaming tall. the clouds, OK? All right. They're not really growing <laughs> really tall. And so they're not going to be producing any kind of rain anytime soon. However, with the sea breeze kicking in this afternoon, we could see some isolated showers and storms around the metro area. Outside right now, it's 91 degrees. Uh, at the airport, 95 at Cincin, 94 in New Braunfels, 96 in Pleasanton, 92 in Gonzales. But here's the thing, we're going to be looking at uh, heat index value close to 100 uh, 
right now outside. It feels like 102 in New Braunfels, 100 in Seguin. It feels like 101 in Pleasanton, 102 in Gonzales. That humidity is playing a factor this afternoon. And here are a couple of weather headlines, things we're going to talk about today in the full forecast. Isolated rain between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. is possible. It's still going to be hot this afternoon, though. Odds are you will not see the rain, but there's a little bit of a chance. This weekend, 100 degree heat, and we have to throw in some Saharan dust in the mix as well. I'll show you that Saharan dust forecast. Unfortunately, next week it will be even hotter as we start August. So a lot to unpack in the forecast, and I'll have the latest aquifer and pollen graphics for you too coming up in just a bit. Thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, Chick-fil-A in North Carolina getting a lot of attention, not necessarily in a good way, after it put out a call for volunteer workers saying you would get paid in chicken, not actual money. The store in Hendersonville posted the position on social media on Tuesday, calling it, quote, a volunteer-based opportunity where drive through workers will be paid five entrees per shift. The move generated some backlash, and now Chick-fil-A's spokesperson has told the Washington Post that that Hendersonville store has decided to go in a different direction. There's new music from Selena, why her family says that they decided to release a new album. And UTSA senior quarterback Frank Harris is getting a lot of preseason love. Larry has more later in sports. Welcome back. Your time, 1237 in the afternoon. And Ursula, anything for Salinas. Now to the legacy of Selena Quintanilla. Nearly three decades after her death, the singer's family is sharing new music. ABC's San Antonio's own John Quinones sat down with her brother and sister to talk it all out. In the 27 years since her tragic death, Selena Quintanilla's star has only grown. And this morning, fans are getting a first listen to Como Te Quiero Yo A Ti, The Way I Love You. Como te quiero yo a ti. The first single from the Tejano Superstar's new album, Moonchild Mixes, produced by her brother, A.B. Quintanilla, who along with his sister, Suzette, sat down with us to talk about the project. How long did it take you? It took me a year. It took me a, a year, right? A little bit over a year. There was there was a, a lot of obstacles to overcome. Everything was recorded on vinyl, so we had to kind of uh, fuse the old school ways with the new school ways. Clean Selena's vocals, put them on timing, and then we also pitched her vocal down just to, just a hair to make her sound a little bit more uh, mature. It truly feels like she went into the studio again and recorded it and. It's, it's pretty incredible. What do you think Selena would have thought of this album? She would have loved it, definitely. She would have loved it and said, uh, it's a wrap, I need to go to the mall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Selena's legacy and fandom growing all the time. Her story first told in the 1997 film that helped make Jennifer Lopez a star. And now a new generation entranced by the Netflix series based on her life. So many of us love Selena's music, but what do you tell the critics who say, you know, this is taking advantage of her legacy? What critics? <laughs> well, we don't care about them. I think as an artist and musicians and people that are in the public eye, you know, we, you have to turn that off. We're still going to do what we want with our music, with our sister, with our band. And I, I hope people understand that everything that we do, we do it with loving care and with beauty. When do you think of your sister? I can't go anywhere, I'm serious. I can be going through a gas station, wherever, and I hear it on the intercom, or a little girl wearing a t-shirt. She's practically, I can walk out this door and go to the mall. But it's, it's a beautiful thing because, yeah. you know, to see her that she's remembered and what we're doing is honoring her, her memory, yeah. her legacy. That's yeah. what it's about. She Crazy. means something. She was not just an incredible artist, she was an incredible person. And what she means to us as Latinos she means something. And I think all of that has transcended and has carried her throughout the years. And she is not going away. The younger generation are discovering her and they're searching her and they want to know more about her. And so that's why we felt it was really important to breathe new life into this old 
music and have it created for the newer generation. Up. Such a beautiful woman. You get new Selena music, you're getting no complaints out of me. Mm. Now, weather, the better. weather, we might have a few complaints there. We got too much of this weather. <laughs> I'll give you guys a pass. You can complain about the weather. Okay. It's been kind of, it's been a bit of a doozy. Hot every single day with very little rain, and today more of the same. The aquifer is down three-tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. In the pollen count, there is only molds. Molds are low at 300, but over the weekend, we could actually see some Saharan dust return. I'll have that forecast for you. And a look at the future cast. This afternoon, a couple of isolated showers storms are possible. That after the break. Yeah, 100 degrees again. You know, I, the board. it's uh, same it's song and dance. Not yeah. exactly. We have a 20% chance of rain, according to Sarah. So it's the little things that we got to clean. We got to stay positive. We've folks. got to. And yes, yeah, some some lucky folks this afternoon. Someone's going to get that rain. Yeah, someone will. And in fact, if as we look at the live camera right now, you can actually see that the clouds are starting to uh, thicken up a little bit. They're still fair weather cumulus. They're not quite tall enough to produce any rain just yet, but they could catch on that sea breeze this afternoon. And uh, again, there's a 20% chance for an isolated shower or storm from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. So while I got to be honest, I also don't want to get your hopes up. Most of us will stay dry today, unfortunately. 91 outside right now feels like 96. It's already hot. South winds at 10 miles per hour. Let's take a look across the KSAT 12 viewing area. Down in Catula. Catula, you're at 96 right now. It's 91 in Del Rio, 90 in Rock Springs, 92 in Kerrville. You can see very clearly the cumulus field across the coastal plain right now. It's along that sea breeze that we could get lucky with an isolated shower or storm, but it is already 97 in Pleasanton and in Castroville, already close to 100 out there. Converse here at 92 degrees, Canyon Lake 87 only right now, 93 in Bandera, 92 in Kerrville. That heat index is fairly brutal. Even though it's 87 in Canyon Lake, it feels like 94. It feels like 100 already in Holotus. It feels like near 100 in Seguin and 102 in Pleasanton. Here's that high-res future cast. Here's what we're wishing for if you uh, are keeping your fingers crossed. Just a couple of isolated showers and storms along the sea breeze. Better rain chances further southeast towards Toward the coast still 20% chance if you happen to get lucky and get a shower or a thunder shower you could hear uh, plenty of thunder and even some gusty winds could be possible but that's again if you're lucky and actually get rain otherwise after sunset at 8 30 our rain chances are done for the day here's a timeline again only 20% from about 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. After that, rain chances go away for the day and for the weekend. For the rest of your uh, Friday here, 98 this afternoon, 100 for the afternoon high temperature. Today could be our 49th 100 degree day. Sunsets at 828. If you have Friday night plans, which many of us do, it'll be warm and breezy, 87 by 10 with gusts of up to 20 miles per hour from the south. Elsewhere, it'll be up to 105 increase of springs in Catula, so even hotter to the southwest. Likely going to stay below 100 though up in the hill country because of the higher elevations this weekend find a way to stay cool uh, maybe by the pool or even if you're floating on local area rivers know that the stream flow is fairly slow so it'll be a low and slow uh, float there on those local rivers 100 tomorrow for your saturday 100 for sunday ditto days over the weekend and there will be a little bit of saharan dust showing you the saharan dust forecast here uh, not a particularly uh, dense plume of saharan dust but it will be noticeable as a haze on the horizon over the weekend both saturday and sunday if you're particularly sensitive to the dust your allergies may act up too uh, but by monday that dust plume will completely disappear so only a brief flirtation with that Saharan dust, light Saharan dust Saturday and Sunday. Otherwise, guys, it's status quo in the weather. As we head into August, we're even going to crank up the temperature a couple more degrees. So this is typically the hottest part of the year, and it's going to be that way for us, too. Certainly proving true. Thank you. Well, it's hot. We're getting used to it, I guess, as best we can. <laughs> but people who don't have to is our man Greg and oh, the yeah. Cowboys. Oh, it's all nice and what, 80 degrees or something out there? How did he get that gig and you didn't get it? Because <laughs> he's the boss. <laughs> so, yeah. 
That's smart. That's smart been, boss. That's been his gig for a very long time. Hey, coming up, we're going to talk about Cowboys linebacker Leighton Vander Esch, who is happy at training camp this year. That's compared to last. And practice one is in the books for the Houston Texans. Coming up. Camping with KZAN, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys linebacker Leighton Vander Esch loves to hunt, fish, and play football. Last season, he was third on the team with 77 total tackles. This after back-to-back -back seasons where he missed multiple games with injuries. In March, he signed a one-year contract to remain with the boys. Yesterday, the fifth-year linebacker sat down to chat with our Greg Simmons. We're joined by the wolf hunter himself, Leighton Vander Esch, the Cowboys star linebacker. And first of all, thanks for being with us. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, you have to be thrilled coming into this camp after what you were able to do last season. Do you feel that way? Absolutely. Um, and I think just as the season went on, really, I just was just starting to get my stride through the end of the half of the last season. So, um, I mean, this, this system is what I'm familiar with, and it's what I've played ever since college. Does that better defensive line also help in that regard? Oh, yeah. You know it. I mean, they, they're they're playing fast and, and they're running around and and what they can do on that front is is incredible. Do you think the defense is better this year? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. We're we're already growing on what we had last year, so um, yeah, I think I think we're gonna do some really good stuff this year. Have you gotten used to the? Are they called guardian covers on your helmets during practice? <laughs> I don't know if you can ever get used to those things, but. Uh, I mean, they're there, and you just got to get used to it, I guess. During the offseason, what is your favorite thing to do? Going home and getting some fresh air in Idaho and, and doing some fishing um, and just enjoying the outdoors, really, just decompressing, getting out of the city and, and, and going home to, to the peace and quiet. That said, did you actually feed a fish to a bear? Yep, I did. And any particular reason why you decided to record that and put it on the, uh, uh, because that's my, that's my life. Uh, I grew I grew up around animals and, and and wildlife and just being in the outdoors my whole life. So things like that don't scare me. Um, people can judge and, and have their opinions on it, but I'm gonna be me, yeah. and nobody's gonna change me. Were you afraid maybe you come back with no, not much of your hand? Insane. So like <laughs> there's a there's the, the little clip that I posted right. was only obviously like 10 seconds of what the whole experience was. Right. So uh, there's a whole story behind behind that little bear, and I'm not gonna get into sure. it, but. Um, I mean, there's a reason we do what we do there. You're a good man. So. Have a great season. We're looking forward to it. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. The Houston Texans finally hit the practice field this morning. All eyes will be on second-year quarterback Davis Mills. So the rookies reported Sunday, and the vets had to report by Tuesday. Head coach Levy Smith told reporters this morning that he expects rookie cornerback Derek Stingley Jr. to be on the field week one. A foot injury limited him to three games last season at LSU. And the preseason honors keep rolling in for UTSA quarterback Frank Harris. Today he was chosen by the Walter Camp Foundation as a Walter Camp Player of the Year preseason player to watch. Now so far this preseason, he's been named a nominee for the Warfel Trophy, the Conference USA Preseason Offensive Player of the Year, the Davey O'Brien Award National Quarterback Award, and Maxwell Award preseason watch lists. After That's last season, I mean, well-deserved. Absolutely well-deserved well recognition. Yep. Great for UTSA. Yeah. For sure. Awesome stuff. Thanks for that. All right, we'll be right back. And just Actually, no, we're going to oh, head over to SA Live. We got a surprise. They're cooking up a good Friday for us. Indeed, and it's a good Friday. Fiona's off today. I don't mean to say that's good that she's off, but Jen is off, so I am by myself oh, here. Oh, honey, you are never alone. I am always here. I think you Everywhere you go. told my wife to watch me today. <laughs> this is my wife, Bonnie, and Hi. she is with AMP Studios, and you're talking about we're fitness talk for about, everybody, yeah, right? Yeah, cycle and strength training for everybody. We used to be Joyride. We had the same cycle class you love, same strength training, same instructors, new name. Okay, you can go away. I don't have to keep oh, watching. I'm watch. so, Darren, help me, please. Darren Carter, comedian, is <laughs> in town funny. here. So you're married too. What, what, oh how, yeah. How do I? Well, first of all, I've been married 24 years. My wife is even tempered. She's always mad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Keep me in my way here. Let's switch places. Oh, he's going to he's gonna, he's gonna get me in trouble right now. So, hey, have you ever redone the bathroom? No, but I should, though. That's my private sanctuary, my man cave. Okay. Right? A tiny bathroom makeover and is going to be your happy space if it isn't already. Jen's going to show us all about that. We have got a bunch of weekend events coming up here. A lot of them are free. Also, this week, if you haven't heard, if you've been under a rock, Talk about the uh, Mega Millions tonight. It's over $1 billion. What would you do if you won? Wow, I get hair transplants. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do if you won? You might wake up alone. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'd buy my own private island and invite you. Would you? Yes. 
Seriously? <laughs> <laughs>these are your top headlines from Cheddar News. The CEO of Hershey says Thursday that the company will not be able to make enough Halloween candy this year. The iconic candy maker says a lack of suppliers and ingredients is interfering with production. Still though, Hershey says 2022 sales will top last year's figures. Meanwhile, at least eight people have been killed in Kentucky's flash floods. More than 22,000 people lost power and are struggling to find clean drinking water. The governor says that this could be one of the worst disasters in the state's history. Cleanup crews are working to clear debris and locate stranded residents. And Facebook parent company Meta reported their first ever quarterly loss Wednesday, blaming the decline on a decreasing value of the euro. Meta also says they'll no longer pay publishers for their content to run on Facebook's news tab. That according to Axios, a spokesperson telling the outlet, quote, most people don't come to Facebook for news. And as a business, it doesn't make sense. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Well, are you really surprised with this forecast as we head into August? No. Temperatures are going to be near 100 or slightly above every single day over the next several days. Here's the thing, though. This afternoon, uh, between about 3 p.m. and 8 p.m., an isolated shower storm, isolated being the key word there, uh, will be around. So make sure to have that KSAP Weather Authority app handy if you're planning on being out and about this afternoon, maybe picking up the kids from daycare or just heading out and about. Keep that weather app handy because we'll keep you updated. Same old, same old in the weather, but it sounds like SA Live is going to be very yeah, dramatic uh, today. Some exciting stuff going on over there. Maybe I, some I'm bad I'm very blood. intrigued. What's going to happen stay, next? Stay tuned to find out what happens. <laughs> SA Live starts right now. It's very intriguing, Ursula. Then on SA Live, you won't believe the big impact one design can make on a small room. We have the transformation. Plus, it's summer and cocktails oh, just can't be good. They need to be fun. How to take your drinks to the next level. And comedian Darren Carter, who is in town this weekend, he is going to be with us live. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square, this is SA Live. Oh, what? Are those winners, John? Or did you just buy them? He's very excited. You're going to share if you win, right? He's shaking his head no. Happy Friday, everybody. It's going to be, could be a very happy Saturday or Friday night for some folks if they win that Mega Millions lottery. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Ostrich. Fiona is off today. Maybe she, no, she didn't win the lottery. It hasn't been drawn yet. But big question is, if you won Mega Millions, which is over $1 billion, what would you do? First thing you would buy. We've got a couple of comments that people have written in on. A new identity. <laughs> yeah, what was it I heard this morning? It's like, forget social media. Just get off that. At least name change and new number. Plane ticket to Switzerland. Very good idea, J.E. And a home on the lake. Oh, yes. That would be, you, you know, the thing is, though, you could buy anything you wanted to including tickets to a comedy show. We're going to talk more about that, but you may have uh, seen our first guest on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno in the past or sharing the big screen with actors like John Travolta. You were in luck this weekend. He's going to be here in the Alamo City laughing out loud at the Upstage Comedy Lounge. Darren Carter is here. First thing you would buy if you won the lottery, sir. More sunscreen! <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> hey, everybody. It's great to be back in San Antonio. I'm Darren Carter, the party starter. And tonight and Saturday, we're going to start that party. <laughs> All the sexy ladies, let me hear you say it. Go ahead. Come, Come on, buddy, let's do it! <laughs> no. yeah. Yeah. How did you become the party starter? You know what, I think... Uh, Besides uh, carrying your flashlight. Yeah, one day I had a flashlight. You know, my, my grandfather, he was a party starter. He used a candle. wasn't as effective, but... Uh, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> you know, to be honest, it just rhymes. Darren Carter, party starter. You know, I'm thank, thank goodness my last name isn't, you know, Darren Tanner, the event planner. So, <laughs> But I'm a comedian. I love being here. My first television appearance was in San Antonio. This is interesting, mm -hmm. yeah. I, uh, I grew up in Fresno, California. I was performing at the Comedy Store in Hollywood, and the producer of the show saw me, and he said, hey, I'm producing a show called 
Showtime's Latino Laugh Festival. And I said, really me? And he said, yeah. He goes, I like the part where you talked about growing up in Fresno. So I'll just show you a little bit. Back then I had all this hair, right? And, uh, and it was bright red. And I'd walk to school and nobody called me Darren Carter, the party starter. They called me Rooster. Like I'd walk to school and from behind me I'd hear, <laughs> Odele, what's up, fireball? Ah, ah, it's the red-headed rooster. What's up, guy? Ah, and Mike, I was like, why do they call me Rooster? And now I look back at those pictures, the bouncy red hair, the heavy backpack. This is what I look like. <laughs> I, I used to work at Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'd be on my break, you know, check out Rooster. He's getting down on the corn on the cob like it's Thanksgiving. And I'd be like. <laughs> Yeah, so it's great. It's great to be. Yeah. So now my, my hair is gone, but the jokes are still here. That's right. Yeah. And you're more into the, the storytelling type jokes. I like telling Based on like personal, well, like that personal right, experience. Right. Like, like the beginning of my career was a lot of, you know, my, my life growing up. And now, you know, I'm a, I'm a dad. I'm a proud parent. My son's 14. I'm a, I've been married for 24 years. My son, his voice is, he's 14. He's, uh, his name is Austin Carter, the little party starter, although now he's getting big. And uh, he's, a, he's a musician on YouTube. He goes by Oz the Bass Boss. And it's because his voice is deep and he plays bass. And when he was really little, I'd be like, Daddy's home. And now his voice is deeper than mine. I'll be like, <laughs> I'll be like Daddy's home. And then from the back of the house, you hear, Nobody cares. <laughs> and that's my wife. Hey, um. <laughs> 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 okay, quiz questions about San Antonio, yes. and we, we like to ask this about everybody, big celebrities that come on here. Yeah. Okay, corn or flour tortillas? Uh, I prefer corn tortillas because I want to say that it's a little bit healthy. I don't know if it is or not, but that's what I think. Uh, favorite junk food? Favorite junk food. I got to say, I, I love Mexican food, and I love eating late at night, and I don't know if that's... You know, because during the day I can I can be okay with my salads and my fruit and everything, but the sun goes down, nightfall comes, and I'm just like in the car at a drive-through, just like eating with the dome light. You ever do that? You're just like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get into it. I'm like, <laughs> and uh, they look at me weird in the parking lot. But yeah, as my but, wife calls it, parking lot picnics. There. It's you great. just go through the drive-through and then park and eat. Oh, like I that. love yeah. that. And sometimes I'll, I'll be like, you know, I'll say like, okay, if there's more than five cars in line, I'll just go home. And then you open your eyes and you're like, wow, there are no cars. It's a sign, you know. So dogs or cats. Dogs or cats. I like dogs because, uh, you know, one of my favorite rappers, wow, wow, Snoop Dogg. Ooh, we gets the Diggo Double G, the big Snoop Dogg. Okay. If you weren't a comedian, yes. what would you be doing? I would be a cat wrangler. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to think of something about cats next. Because, you know, what? Uh, we have a farm out in Fre near California, in, or near Fresno in California, and we, we gave all of our cats country names, like Meow Haggard and Kitty Chesney, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I don't know what I would be doing. If I wasn't a comedian, I don't know. So you were, you were on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Yes. First of all, what's he like? Jay Leno's the nicest guy. Hey, Jay Leno, our next comedian coming to the stage. He's, he was, he's fantastic. Very, he was, Mike, you know how nice you are? He was just like you. Be quiet, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for bailing me out You're on that You're welcome. Fist bump on that. And you said there was a comedy club that yeah. all the comedians would go to, and you and even he, and you'd have, what, like four minutes to do a set? Oh, yeah. It's, it? it's, in, it's in Hermosa Beach. It's famous. Uh, it's called the Comedy and Magic Club. And, you know, Seinfeld pops in, George Wallace. You know, when he was alive, George Carlin. Um, Jay Leno's there every Sunday. So... You know, I was just there last week. I did, you know, two shows, and it's it's just a, you know, I love being a comedian, and to be able to come to San Antonio and do this new comedy club, we're we're very excited. That uh, I'm, I'm great to reconnect with fans that that I haven't I haven't been here in San Antonio for about three years. So, thank you for having me back. I'm excited. And you also have a podcast. Yeah, I have a podcast. 243 episodes. It's called Pocket Party, the Pocket Party Podcast. It's on Spotify, Apple, YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel, D A R R E N Carter, and we give great. You know, it's you can listen to it pretty much at work. It's clean, you know, and but funny. It's good. Yeah. Being an Elvis fan, that you yes. said, do you ever talk about him on your podcast? Yeah, you know, when the Elvis movie came out, um, you know, I, I, I love that movie. In fact, the first time I I, uh, I was I was in the wrong theater. I was watching the Minions, and I, <laughs> and I was like, wow, when's this trailer gonna end? But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, I've seen the movie. I've seen, it, I've seen it once. My son has seen it twice, and it's. I, I love the Elvis movie. I thought it was fantastic. Okay, quick trivia. Elvis's yeah. middle name. Aaron. Elvis Aaron Presley. Ah, his co-star in uh, Viva Las Vegas. I want to say Anne Margaret. Very good. Okay, what color was his hair? Before it was black, it was brown. 
He is an Elvis fan. I don't know. I'm not, thank you. Those were easy questions. I, I thought you were going to go deeper than that, but that was great. Thank you. Favorite Elvis song? Uh, I would say, um, well, it used to be like, well, I like Love Me Tender. I like, uh, um, well, there's one for the money. I like all that stuff. I like, uh, yeah. let's just pretend. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm the Elvis of comedy. <laughs> Me and Darren Carter is going to be performing at the Upstage Comedy Lounge tonight and tomorrow, 8 p.m. You can buy tickets <laughs> online. And for a link, he's, he's doing the color pop and all that stuff. Oh, this you can is buy good. tickets <laughs> online. For a link, go to our website, essaylive.com. Click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Darren, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate thank you. It. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, and right. welcome back to San Antonio. All right. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, weekend might be a good time for catching up or, you know, refreshing any part of your home, perhaps. And today, Argenta by Ostrowski shows us a tiny restroom makeover, proving that even the smallest space can be be performed and transformed. You perform the transformation, I guess, <laughs> into a happy space. I'll get this right. The tiniest restroom deserves a nice makeover. It can be done, and today Magdalena Mendez, with experimenting with decor, is making the transformation for less than a hundred dollars. The reasons I think the restroom is very important to decorate or even to look pretty is because usually when guests come over, they usually won't ask to see your bedroom or your kitchen or any other room, but they probably will ask to use your restroom. So this is the part where you come in and you can show how beautiful and how beautifully decorated it is or even just give them the feel of them like a spa or a serene place so, so we're gonna start off with D we're gonna put decals on the back wall just to bring kind of the the, the depth of the, of the restroom forward and then we're gonna put open shelving on just so that this client obviously needs storage so we're gonna bring her some storage some storage baskets with some shelves and then make it pretty all right time to get started. The first step, adding the decals. Starting with some decals. These decals I found on Amazon, um, very inexpensive, and they're just literally stickers, huge stickers um, that we're going to layer on, on the back wall just to give it some depth and make it look nice and pretty. Here's a look at the before. Really a very tiny space. Time for Magdalena to add her special touch. It wasn't specific. She was just like, what do you think we should do in here? And I was just like, I gave her the idea. And usually with my clients, I just like show them like what we can do. And if they like it, then that's what we do. Just put up stickers, literally. <laughs> They're decals, simple. We were probably done in less than 15, 20 minutes. Um, got all of them up and now it looks pretty, even just like that. If you were just to leave it like that and you didn't need storage, that would be perfect. Um, for this particular client, she needs storage in here, so we're putting up two shelves. And uh, these were all DIY. And all I did was buy brackets, uh, got a piece of wood, cut it, stained it, and we're gonna put it up. After putting up the shelving and everything, we put um, storage containers, like baskets and stuff like that, where they could hide the toilet paper, the air fresheners, all that stuff. It's still contained, but it still looks pretty and nice and makes a big difference. What was the most challenging part? Well, putting up the shelving, um, it's not that difficult, but you know, getting it leveled and stuff like that. That decals that we put up makes a big difference. It makes it come alive and make it look so pretty in here. And even if it's just just a toilet room, it actually makes it look so much nicer. And, um, I am an interior decorator from San Antonio, Texas. So if any, if you ever want to reach out to me, um, you can reach me out on all my social medias um, or experimenting with decor at gmail.com. Email me any details, and I'll be ready and willing to help. Wow, that's amazing. And by the way, uh, Magdalena Men uh, Mendez has over 97,000 followers on Tic Tac and Tic Tac, pardon me, and 50. <laughs> okay, Tic Tac, Tic Tacs. Uh, 54,000 on Instagram. Be sure to follow her on social media pages for more inspiration and any budget. And go to Tic Tac and you can find all the goodies there. So, still ahead of SA Live. Happy hours, the best hour of making fun, refreshing cocktails all with a secret ingredient made right here in the Alamo City. But first, a Star Walker is born. We're learning how to wield the lightsaber from the local martial arts expert and how you can join other fun events like this one. That's next on SA Live.